Hi, I'm Lee Partridge and welcome back to Cole UTV. It's our pre-match show as we take on Gillingham in another big game here at the JobServe Community Stadium today. There's loads of you here, plenty of you here today, so uh, let's make plenty of noise for the lads this afternoon once again. If you want to see all the latest team news, head over to our social media channels or the website and that will be bring you up to date with all today's team news. Right, let's get into the show and we'll hear the thoughts now of the head coach, Matt Bloomfield, on his preparations for this afternoon's challenge. Matt, um, it's been a chilly week so far, so I'm sure you've had some... Um, changes to training to make you've been away as well so how's the weekend so far? Yeah really busy yeah thanks I've been at St George's Park starting start my uh, pro licence um, so I went straight there from the game on Saturday been there Sunday, Monday, Tuesday got back late last night and straight back into work so um, it was nice to sort of have a, a slightly different focus for a couple of days and try and get some learning done but at the same time I was missing it here and in constant uh, contact with Tomo and planning training and planning the week ahead so it's been a full on few days but yeah I've loved it and it's uh, back to action on Saturday, Gillingham uh, at home. It's, I guess, a bit weird because it's not that long since you played Gillingham, but there's been considerable changes in, in the time since you, you did face them on Boxing Day for, for both these sides. Yeah, both both um, clubs have, um, have strengthened in the transfer window, so it could look a slightly different game than it did on that day, albeit only a few weeks ago. Um, so we, yeah, obviously I, I really respect Neil Harris and the, the job that he's done throughout his managerial career. Um, he's a great, great guy um, and um, yeah, we know that they're a, a team to be feared. We know they're a team to be really respected. Uh, they made some really good signings um, off the back of a good home 2-0 win against Hartlepool last week. So um, we know what to expect. We, we've done our research and uh, as we always do and work diligently over the weekend to put a plan in place and we're we're looking forward to you know the rest of this week training and, and looking forward to that game on Saturday. You over the the past few weeks, month maybe, you found a system that, that really works for you and it's now getting you the results as well as the, the performances that we've we've talked so much about. How flexible do you have to be with that knowing that, that sides will, will be looking at you and, and trying to look at ways that, that they can hurt you through that? Oh yeah, totally. We have to be flexible. I, 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 I hate the thought of becoming fixed mindset and just thinking that um, you found something that works. You have to always be thinking, trying to think ahead and trying to be open to new ideas and, and new availability. So we've got to, to make sure um, we are very open-minded in what we're trying to do. Um, over the last couple of weeks, the, the system that we've been playing um, has given us some results, no doubt about that. But you know, I'm not obsessed with systems. I'm obsessed with good people and good players. And we just try and get the boys in the right space to, to go and perform on a Saturday. And that has to be our focus every week. It's been a busy January transfer window already. You managed to do a lot of your business quite early on, and although you've been able to ease those players in quite gently, how beneficial is that to have them in at the start rather than sort of a, a rush at the end of the period? Oh, massively so. I think, I mean, you know, the plans have been being put in place for a little while now, and, and talks have been ongoing. Um, you know, and obviously we've got Ross as head of recruitment and Dimitri as sporting director who are, are really working hard in the background and I, I thank them for the work that they've been, they've been doing. Um, and obviously thanks to the chairman for providing the funds that, that we can add to the, to the club and try and help move the club forward. So, um, yeah, it's been really helpful and really, I'm really thankful to have the guys in so early on in the window. Um, it's meant that we haven't had to kind of do wholesale changes at the same time. I'm trying to... Um, add a little bit of continuity uh, as well because the lads have been sort of playing well for a little while now I believe and, and the results have come last couple of weeks so it's just my job is to make sure that we um, use use the squad as as, uh, as wisely and as diligently as I possibly can. Yeah and it, it is a big squad we've talked before about um, the, the competition for places and the, the players that haven't been involved or going forward may not be involved is there any update on on whether you might be able to get them opportunities elsewhere any more interesting players? No I, I don't think there's anything to add in terms of um, there's nothing sort of imminent as, as far as I'm aware um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm really respectful of Everyone who's at this football club, you know, to become a professional footballer is a really hard industry to break into. And anyone who, you know, creates a career for themselves, I'm, I'm fully respectful of, of the job that they've done to get to this point. Uh, and any conversations I have with any players will be dealt with that empathy and respect that I believe that they deserve. So, of course, um, in football, time moves on, the game moves on and, and, and clubs move forward and squads evolve. So there will be some conversations being had, but um, I think they should be done um, with the respect they deserve behind closed doors between 
um, between adults, and um, we'll see where that leads us. But you know, the club, the, the you know, the squad is probably bigger than what we we need it to be. It has been at all points since I've been here, and I've always sort of said I'd like it to be slightly smaller, because of the evolution of um, of the squad and the signings we've made. Um, I think there's still a couple more that we could be a little bit lighter on, but um, like I say, I feel like those conversations need to be had in privacy behind closed doors. And just finally, with the, the results that you've had over the past couple of weeks, I know you won't be resting on your, your laurels, you want to, to keep going on and getting those results, but is it almost a bit of a relief that having had that period where you had good performances and it wasn't quite falling for you, is it almost a bit of a relief that you can say, yeah, this is... We had to be patient, but this is this is finally what we we were trying to build all along. I think um, the one thing I would say it, it it was it was coming for a little while, and I really believed that. But the longer I said it without it actually showing itself, probably started to lose a little bit of impact and strength. The fact that those results did come when they did um, kind of backed up what my eyes was were showing me and what the videos were showing me and the stats were telling me. So. But I think your first sentence was exactly right. There's absolutely no resting on any laurels around here. I'm hungry for success. We're hungry for success as a football club. Um, success looks like different things to different people. But for me, it's it's still about survival this season. That that, that hasn't changed. Of course, we've been really fortunate to, to strengthen, but we're here to, to su survive. We're here to succeed and, and nothing changed off the back of a couple of decent results. If anything, it just strengthens the resolve because Winning feels a lot nicer than losing, that's for sure, and it just makes you want to have that feeling, um, you know, that five o'clock feeling on a Saturday winning a football match is there's nothing like it, um, and kind of like you know, the more you do it, the more you want it, and the more you crave it. Um, so if anything, I've been more obsessed over the weekend by, by the you know the, the coming games than than ever. After three wins on the spin, the lads will have plenty of confidence going into this afternoon's game. It was the reverse game that sparked a run of good form for us here at Colchester with Junior Shamadu on target in a tightly contested match. But it was three points nonetheless. So let's take a look back at how that one played out. We picked up a valuable three points there, but it will be a different Gillingham team than the one we faced last time. With their buyout, they've made some strong additions in January, much the same as we have, of course. But there's been Tom Nichols, Ollie Hawkins, George Lapsley and Tim Dieng making the move to Kent. They won 2-0 last weekend with Nichols on target and an assist. And you can see if those lads are starting and all the up-to-date team news once again on our socials or on our website. Right, back to the U's. And um, we've got the thoughts of the key man in this winning run, John Akindi. He sat down with us at the training ground on Wednesday afternoon to talk about his preparations and facing his old team. 
on really good results over the past couple of weeks, good performances from you as well, all good things to take into Gillingham at home on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think we've performed really well. I think we have been performing really well in previous games, just not getting the results. So it's good to get the results as well. And for you as well, it's not just about being uh, amongst the goals, but, but the assists as well. Do you enjoy that part of the game as well, make, making those goals for other players? Definitely. I just want to help the team get the three points, whether that's scoring, assisting, playing well, whatever it is, just it's nice to, to be a part of it. And you've had that combination um, with Samson over the, the past few games as well. How's that been linking up with him and, and how much can, can you help him on his sort of starting out in the, the journey and how much does, does he help you? Um, I think, like you said, we help, help each other. I try to give him as much advice as possible, but he's a great player in himself. He's just really good, really um, real handful to play uh, for the other teams against. So, no, it's been yeah. joyful. It's, um, Really enjoyed it. Every time we have spoken on BBC Essex to Matt Bloomfield about your performances, he's often said um, that he's, he's spoken to you and he said he doesn't want you to be a, a superstar, but he wants you to be there starting <laughs> and making impact in games. What, from your point of view, have those conversations been like? And, and, and is that kind of how you were feeling as well, that you wanted to be there right from the start making an impact? Definitely. That's what the gaffer said as soon as he came in. He doesn't see me as someone that comes on played together before, he knows what I could do and he just wants to bring that to the table and we were on the same page so yeah it's really really happy to get that opportunity and you know repay that faith. It's uh, Gillingham, one of your, your former clubs again on Saturday, not that long since since you last played them and, and had them as well in the um, the uh, EFL Trophy as well. Mm. So you've come up, them, up against them a couple of times already this season. But obviously they've they've changed a, a bit in the past couple of weeks. They've been busy mm. in the transfer window. Do you expect them to still be a, a League Two club next year? Um, only time can tell in terms of the, the League Two part. But um, like you said, they've made good signings over the last few weeks. So we just got to be prepared that it's going to be a tough game, you know, um, in the position that they're in. We, everyone wants the points, so it's not going to be an easy game. And we just got to take each game as it comes and obviously chills and try and get the three points. Many thanks to big John Akindi there for taking the time out, even though he's a bit croaky. Uh, to have a chat with us. Right, that's pretty much it. Almost a time to go out there, take your seats, cheer on the lads. Do remember to check out the socials for all ours and Gillingham's team news. We'll be back here on Tuesday for a pre-match show ahead of the Salford game. Tickets are available for that one online. That's about it from me. Go out there, cheer on the lads. Hopefully we're taking three points, another three points from today's game. And I'll see you very, very, very soon. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.